when people think about cancer as a genetic disorder, often their mind goes to examples of other genetic disorders like cystic fibrosis or sickle cell anemia. And those are examples where a parent passes a mutation onto a child. It may be a single copy or two copies of the mutation, um, but it's a single gene and a change in that single gene is sufficient to cause the disease. When we think about cancer, that is generally not the case. There are a small number of cancers, certain forms of um, colon or ovarian and breast cancer that are caused by changes in a single gene that lead to a huge increase in risk for disease. But most forms of cancer are actually due to a number of mutations, maybe as many as 6 to 15. Um, and many of these mutations are not inherited from the previous generation, but are actually acquired. So as our cells divide, as we go throughout our lifespan, damage occurs in our DNA. And this damage actually causes the mutations in those specific genes that increase our risk for cancer. Now, some of this damage is just random chance. Every time our cells divide, our DNA has to make a complete copy of itself. And sometimes there are mutations or changes in that DNA. And if those mutations aren't detected and repaired, then that change is passed on to every daughter cell from each succeeding generation. In other cases, the mutation is more environmental. So it may be the impact of ultraviolet light on cells in our skin. Or it might be certain uh, cancer-causing chemicals that alter the DNA from smoking or from exposure to things like asbestos. Whatever the case, a subset of our cells begins to acquire these mutations. And over time, as that population of cells grows and divides, it acquires new mutations, and the whole collective acquiring of these mutations moves us from some threshold of normalcy over into abnormal cell growth and ultimately leading to cancer. One reason that we can approach this problem is we have new technologies, brand new technologies, that allow us to go in and test all of the genes at once from a person, or even from a lot of people, to see what's different about them in their cancer cells versus their non-cancer cells. This is remarkable because even 10 years ago, we didn't go in and look at all the genes at once. We would go and do an experiment and look at one gene at a time. And considering that we have 22,000 plus genes, this is a remarkable increase in, in the rate at which we can collect information and then go in and look and say what's different about this person with breast cancer versus this person with breast cancer. Microarrays have allowed us to uh, study cancer um, on a more comprehensive level. Uh, they are miniaturized um, glass slides that contain millions of spots on them. Each of those spots interrogates a different uh, position in the genome, so we can essentially do millions of experiments simultaneously on one tumor sample. So this allows us to characterize the genome very quickly on uh, lots of uh, cancer samples and gives us a very comprehensive view of what's gone wrong in those, in those tumor samples. So this has really revolutionized the way uh, cancers are analyzed um, and the types of information we can get out of uh, tumor samples quickly. Hudson Alpha has committed uh, a lot of resources to um, uh, implementing the, uh, these high-tech platforms so that we can do very rapid analysis of uh, thousands of, of samples per year with um, just the latest technology available. Funding is a major limitation for anybody doing research, but another one is getting access to uh, very high-quality clinical information and both DNA and cellular cell samples from individuals with the particular types of cancer. We are benefiting greatly here at Hudson Alpha from our, our interactions with Dr. Marshall Schreeder and uh, his Cancer Institute, as well as other local physicians and other clinical workers all around the country as part of other projects. Uh, but uh, that is one of our rate limiting steps. And so the more contributions that we can have in that, the, the better uh, we can, uh, and the faster we can move on them. So one of the things that Hudson Alpha is doing in terms of cancer genomics is participating in a large national project which is called TCGA, or the Cancer Genome Atlas. And TCGA are the four bases of DNA, so that's how we can easily remember it. So what we're doing there, the best way that I can think of it is it's like the parable of five blind men and the elephant. And each of the blind men is brought into a room and they are told to find out what's in the room and they do it all by different ways. One of them touches, one of them smells, they touch different parts of the elephant and they think that it's different things and it's only by putting all the information together that they can figure out that what they're dealing with is an entire elephant. 
So kind of in a similar way, what we're doing is we're one of seven cancer genome characterization centers across the country. Some of the other ones are at Harvard and at Sloan Kettering and Johns Hopkins. And at Hudson Alpha, we're looking at a specific part of the cancer genome, as is each of the other six centers. And at the end, what we'll do is pool all the data together. So we're specifically sent the same samples, all seven of us, and we look at different parts of the cancer genome comparing normal samples to tumor samples. So most of the advances that are going to be made this decade are going to be related to targeted therapy and targeted therapy that's also personalized in the sense that it is targeted to that individual person's specific malignancy and the physician knows that in advance of using the drug. In the past decade, what we've had to do is we've had, well, okay, if you have cancer of the breast, 60% of the people may respond to this combination. That's the best we have, and so that's what we use. In the next decade, it's going to be more and more what is the, the genotype or the genetic mutations involved in this particular malignancy for this patient, and then what is going to be the most effective way to, to counteract those mutations that have uh, led to tumor growth. It is clear from the way that biomedical research is going and especially the new tools of genetics and genomics that allow you to look globally at the problem, to look at all the genes at once. It's clear that what we're learning from that is that there are many questions that we can now answer that we haven't been able to answer before. I'm hoping in five to ten years that we'll certainly have many, many more treatments and preventatives for lots of cancers, and maybe in 20 years um, it'll become an annoyance rather than a killer. I, I, I like to be optimistic to think that we can work our way towards that, and there are a lot of people, certainly we here at Hudson Alpha, we're very motivated towards trying to make that realized.